The two semi-final ties, Simon, in terms of approaching the second legs, very much alive. Middlesbrough, Chelsea, and of course uh, Liverpool and Fulham. Fulham still in there fighting, of course they are. <laughs> but on Liverpool, if they come through this period of no Mo Salah, no Trent Alexander-Arnold, unscathed, do you think they could be on for the most special season yet under Klopp? Um, possibly. I mean, I think that that will also be determined by the performances of others. Um, if Manchester City don't hit their straps, which I have no indication that they won't, then it can be an opportunity for Liverpool to be doing something quite significant. Obviously, the Champions League isn't in that mix, so that's not available to them. Oh, it is, isn't it? Of course they are. No, they're in the Europa League, aren't they? Yeah, the Europa no, League. Europa League, yeah, yeah, of course. So that's not available to them. Yeah. But look, this, is, this Liverpool side, as has been described by the Liverpool acolytes, Sunis and Danny Murphy, has so much about it and has so much goal power in it. Yeah. Um, and so while Salah will be a loss to them, they have the ability to be able to overcome a loss by giving other players, in the same way that people suggested that once Harry Kane stepped out the door at Tottenham Hotspur, that was game up and game over. Um, Liverpool have the ability to overcome sides like Fulham simply because they're a better team. And at this moment in time, they're in an irresistible uh, um, vein of form. And they believe they can beat anybody. And that's the first start point in any conversation, in any sport or any business. And they've got a manager <clears throat> that is, to me, I think, um, the best manager, if not close to it, in world football. I know that the statistics will tell you that Guardiola is. I know wow. that. What, better than Pep? Well, if he had the same resources as Pep, I think he might have achieved the same things. Now, the argument will be, what style of football do you like to watch? I like to watch Liverpool style of football more than I like to watch Manchester City's. And no, Manchester City fans, it's not because I have an agenda against your football club. I just like a more feral, dynamic brand of football rather than this you know, overwhelming destruction of other sides by passing them to almost near standstill. And, 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 the, and the nature of Manchester City's football, whilst beautiful in the eye isn't quite as exciting as a dynamic explosion Liverpool of, 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 you know, often yeah. produce. And that's, yeah. just, and that's just a personal choice. So I think Klopp is a, is a brilliant manager. I think he's now back in the groove and back in most press conferences saying things that are sensible uh, and not constantly indulging himself in what they do and don't have yeah. and how unfortunate it is for them. Mm. And I think he's an outstanding manager. I mean, it's often said that Ferguson, one of his many qualities was how he could reinvent the Manchester United <clears throat> side uh, after a, a, a bout of rebuilding. Yeah. Um, the greatest managers, I think, are measured by their ability to do that, are they not? And Jürgen can do that. I mean, I'd never heard of Conor Bradley, and he comes. Uh, Kelleher, the goalkeeper, I knew he'd got a run out around this time. Gravenberch, I'd never heard of him, and he comes, and he catches Alexis McAllister, we knew about, yeah. but he takes him from Brighton, sl slots him into his setup. Sure. Rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. I mean, that's, I mean, again, it's it's a metric. It's one of the metrics. Yeah. But we're not talking about rebuilding from scratch. You know, in days gone past, you know, Liverpool took Mark Lawrenson from Brighton. It's not an unfamiliar territory to take club players from lesser clubs and put them into a space where they can play with better players and enhance their own abilities. I think that it's quite <clears throat> it's quite a, a, a decent thing to be able to achieve obviously but it's it's not if Liverpool, Liverpool when, when we talk about rebuilding Man United they had the embarrassment of riches of the economic power to be able to do precisely what they wanted for most of the, uh, the most of the noughties and the late 90s. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool's is slightly different. Whilst they have an economic precedence over other football clubs, they don't have quite the resources that Manchester United have, Manchester City have. They more often than not have to sell to balance their books to be able to get the income, to be able to generate the returns that they need to have to buy the players that they want. So I think there's an element of difference about this thought process about what Ferguson did. When Ferguson decided Yapstan was gone or David Beckham was gone or someone had stepped or run past their sell by date or he needed to get rid of Paul McGrath or Norman White at the beginning, all these other players, it's because he had the ability to be able to flex and build from the basis of having enormous financial resources. Mm. Now, Liverpool are no slobs. No. They're not chopped liver as far as finances are concerned. But I think that what he's done is he's, he's addressed the problem that everyone knew that was coming or saw that was coming, except soon as last year, which was... <laughs> The loss of certain players in the middle of the park yeah. created a lack of energy in Liverpool that they didn't replace for a period of time. And now he's got the balance back right. Sure. And, I mean, he's this got, and he's got firepower. This was Liverpool were fifth last season. And now we're talking about them potentially having their best season yeah. ever. But this, there's, there's also this analysis and that, that gets trotted out with with Klopp about this rock and roll football, this heavy metal football that saw itself... So almost uh, um, implode at Dortmund where teams run out of energy and they have to replenish and refresh. And because there is a, a level of intensity that Klopp 
demands and expects from his players in the manner in which he plays, it does mean that he's got to think very strategically about when players are coming to the end of their cycles and being able to recycle them yeah. to be able to build a great side. And you see these... You know, they didn't defend their title very well, did they? When they won their title, they defended it poorly. That's right. Um, and in and then they had a great season two years ago where they looked like they were going for everything. And then this last season gone past, they had a drop-off again. Now, you, you can look at that and you can say it's a coincidence or you can say it's a necessity of Klopp having to think about what he's doing. And then who am I to tell Klopp? He knows what he's doing. Um, but I, I, I think that it's one of the component parts. It's not the only part. It's a component part of what makes a great manager is the ability to rebuild. But when we talk about rebuild, you know, it's not a decaying building that's fallen to the floor. No, 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 no. These are buildings the that foundations are, solid. are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely right. Fulham, we haven't forgotten about you. Still very much in the tie, as we stress, just as Middlesbrough, of course they are, in the tie with Chelsea, having beaten Chelsea at the Riverside one goal to nil the other night. Who's to say it's not a Middlesbrough, um, a Middlesbrough Fulham final? Having said that, Liverpool look very much in the mood to do something not just in this competition but in others as well Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport